All right, you guys all warmed up yet? Okay, so tonight, um, as I was going through my notes on this phase, and again, just to reiterate what this phase is about, it's about uh, come on and can, and really foundational movement of the art, foundational chances, um, foundational just ways to hit, history of the art, to the point where when we wrap this up, which is, which is coming to a close in probably the next month or so, um, I really want everyone who's kind of gone through the whole phase to feel really comfortable, like, okay, they move it, oh, I, I feel comfortable, I can fight out each morning, I know how to do this. Um, tonight, I want to look at a couple of the ones we haven't really looked at, Ehen and Cosette. And really what I want to concentrate on is the fact that there is a lot of power and um, efficiency going from kind of this backwards weighted stance to this forward weighted stance. And it's very easy to get very army on this, very push on it, but there's some magic that happens in between here and here. Um, that's actually very, very powerful. It's just way different than just pushing somebody. The fact that your spine is going like this to this is actually a very, very big deal. So let's just start off with something. So I got a mat here, and let's first start with this, this e head. Again, e head is like an ishimoji, just forward leaning for the most part. Now I'm gonna say forward advancing, and I'm saying I'm perfect, it's forward leaning. I got Matt here, we're going to be jostling. I'm actually just going to do this. He had no command off to the side. Now, obviously, if I said over, Matt's in a lot worse position right now. I can do another E hand over here and just take it back up. Actually, let's just start there. We're just going to do kind of double E head from this grab. I'm going to start from one side of the other, just here and then here. I almost said it's so good, okay, kind of thing, but I really want you to focus on the E hand. And what I really want you to focus on is this is this. I'm not just pushing with my arm. It won't work. It's the fact that he's grabbing onto me is the problem. And his hands are moving. That's the issue. So if I just try to push his hand away without moving my shoulders, his hands aren't going to move. So I'm just going to take my body, really do nothing with my arms, just leave them here and shift my body forward. And then I'm going to shift my body forward. Make sense? All right, let's just start there. This is nice and like, I'm the nice guy today, okay? <laughs> What a strange reversal. I know. So, so one of the things I'm noticing is, uh, is the, the grapple starts and we're all kind of here in this tussle. And a lot of folks are actually not doing e -hand. They're leaving this hand here, and, which kind of looks like this. And granted, this isn't terrible, but think of this as a movement drill and not a combat technique for a second. We're, we're moving through. Now this is kind of on this side of his head, which makes life a little bit easier. For, for the next for the next piece of the movement, if you stay tied to them, it, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of man here. <laughs> I'm not expecting this to move him a heck of a lot. In fact, uh, I'm not moving him at all with it. I want to put my weight on this arm. That's doing a bit more work for me. Now the next phase of this comes through, and there we are. Just don't tie that hand up in that grab. You're drilling a movement. Monte. So the magic on this, Eckberg, the magic on this isn't the fact that I'm moving laterally through space. That's not where the magic happens. That doesn't do anything. That gets me out of the way, maybe, and I can do something else, but that's not really you can. It's the fact that my spine is here, and then it's gonna be here. That's, that's the magic. That's what puts, now I'm not pushing into her arm. I'm forward weighting myself, so all this weight is now on her arm. There's not any choice, it's just right there. And so from there, I'm just note my spine angle and line with my leg. That's where the magic happens. You see a lot of people, they're trying to do it and they're only getting to about here. They're getting to, if you look at like maybe a clock, they're getting to about 11. No, I need to kind of almost, I really need you kind of more. All right, so if anything, if you find this work, get, leave your arms where they are, all right? And just take a big step so you get a really good forward lean. And I think you'll see that from there it's gonna be pretty easy. All right, you're just not going into all right, keep going. Uh, as a group, uh, because I'm seeing a lot of, uh, especially a lot of monkey business Whoa. going between the first and the second movement. So what I'd like us to do is we're going to start Shizen no Kamai. All right, just regular posture. I want you to find a line, find a line in front of you, and step forward on that line in the hand. Very good, yep. You'll notice your left shoulder is in front, your right shoulder is behind, and your chest and your belt are facing in the same direction. If you find your chest facing in a different direction, turn it to the base of your belt. 
if you find your belt facing in a different direction, <laughs> well, we're in trouble. So here we are. From here, I'm going to do the same thing on my right side going forward this way. Angling in, we have our chest and our belt facing the same direction. Our shoulder is over our hip. Uh, here we go, this is, this is proper e-head. The reason why I wanna bring this up is because what I'm seeing in a lot of folks who are having some trouble with this is a structural breakdown. And sometimes it's helpful to think of this as a structural exercise. So one of the common ways I've seen this break down is folks are turning their chest and bringing this shoulder forward. They're kind of doing this. I'm, I'm overemphasizing. And this doesn't look very much like my, my e head. Particularly, it gets rough if my belt is facing one way and my chest is facing another. All I'm going to do is I'm, is I'm going to bring my hands back and have my belt match my chest and put a little weight there. It feels very different, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we're, now we're looking good. So I'm going to ask you to make sure that when you're doing this first e head in particular, Go ahead and set up the arms. This is a movement drill and a structural drill. Go ahead and set up the arms. Step through with that left hip and just, and just lean. We're looking pretty good here. My chest, my belt are facing in the same direction. The next step becomes a, a lot easier, okay? Watch out for turning your chest independently of your, of your waist. Thank you, keep going. <laughs> This is a real pain in the ass stuff right here, right? Yeah. Mata, Mata. Uh, God, so everybody's done this at one point in time. Everybody said that, that second knee hand is, is messing people up a little bit. So we're getting here. I'm moving over. Oh, he's not getting there. I kick him. Boom, boom, boom. Whew. All right. So now I have the opportunity to see a second move. I got to get behind that foot. I'm seeing everybody at some point in time is like, okay. And I'm, I'm toast. Because I only went with my right leg. I didn't go with my right side. I need to go with my whole right side. Okay? And that's what's screwing people up. They're trying to get that triplet so they're, they're getting rid of the structure. Shoulders, you know, shoulders, feet, hips. And they're doing this. Now my shoulders are going this way. My feet are going this way. My hips are in between. This is not a come on. So I'm just here. It will seem like you can't get through this. That's the kicker, and that's why you're doing it, because you get to this position, and it's like, oh, I can't, I can't go through him. Well, the thing is, is his hands are getting closer to his face. My arm's sticking through. That's the problem. That will, that will mess him up. He will move by the time you get there, and then we can do things. If I do this, Kyle, I'll have to stand up and jump. Okay? So, this is a good lesson on how to actually move to a place that a person's occupying and have them get out of the way by the time you're actually there. Because my hand, watch what's happening with this shoulder and this hand, please. One. If this shoulder stays here, Kyle's <coughs> shoulders don't move. Do we notice that? Right? His upper body is still in the same place. But if my arm starts coming forward, Kyle's hand goes backwards. Kyle goes backwards. Okay? Because Kyle definitely doesn't want me to like get like this. No. So he's going to move himself as he feels his hands coming towards him. He knows that arm's coming towards him. He's going to hold firm on that and he's going to move himself back out of the way. Okay? And then we can do what we want. Okay? Stop that. Okay? So really, as you can hear, step through that full right side and they'll get out of the way before you get there. Okay? What if the person doesn't quite go down? You know, you know I mean, we're looking at this and oh, they're supposed to go down. No, no, no. The point of this is that they don't go down. The point of this is that you're, this is a bad position. This isn't a great position. You want to get some type of advantage. Well, I'm definitely in a more advantageous spot than David is right now. All right, he's kind of holding on his structure. My structure is good. I got shots in here. All right, he's going to have to disengage and do something. But, man, like going behind his leg right now is really hard. Right? Because he stepped back. He just moved. He had some distance. Long arms. Fine. Do we need him this way now? Cut across in his face. Just do it that way. Okay? Don't worry about it. Again, the goal wasn't to make the... Again, it looks like it's okay. I wasn't trying to do a sotokate. I was trying to get you out of this position with the hand. I don't know how he's going to react. I have no clue. Great. Shuffle then. Yay. 
Push attempts, yay. I can't get behind that leg, I can't do that back takedown. Great, move me from this way. Okay, so don't, I see people getting discouraged because they're not going down. That wasn't the point. The point wasn't to be able to have this cool takedown with too many tents. The point was to see like, hey, can, if I just oh, do this, can I improve my position in life? Yes, I can. You know, okay, great. Well, don't worry, you may not be able to go there, you have to go somewhere else. Okay, good. For, for some of you, this is probably an ID you've already had or something you've already heard, but I think it bears, it bears repeating. Mr. Matt, if I can borrow you, sir. Um, this is not an outcome-oriented technique. We're not doing this with the specific goal of saying, Matt will go down just like it's an Asoto Gake. I don't want to approach that this way. I want to focus on myself. I want to focus on, am I moving well? Is my structure? Am I moving soundly? Because... If you move a good process, you're very likely to find a good outcome. Even if things go a little bit awry, uh, I do this and that steps back. Oh, sh this isn't the outcome I expected, but hey, at least I moved well. Uh, oh, ooh, we can switch sides. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're, now we're just going to hold right on. We're barely going to use the other hand. I don't want you to think of this as an outcome dependent thing. Like Mr. Yeah. White was saying, if they go down, great. Hey, awesome, we love that, but that's not the point. The point is to move well, to move well. And, and if you're looking at this and saying, well, crap, I'm wearing a yellow though, you know? <laughs> I'm still working on this, I'm wearing a white belt, this is my fourth class. Good, this is why we're working on this. That's exactly why we're doing this. So, have patience, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Most of us, if you, if you hear the words high coach and you don't know what that means, it's okay, welcome to your fourth class. <laughs> You'll get a chance to see this uh, down the road here in not too long. When we do a throw, like a tie coach, which we'll do this very gently and slowly. Here, here, here we go, we're just kind of moving offline, rotating and bringing someone over the leg. You'll notice that the whole body's kind of moving as a unit, yes? This is the same exact thing that you're working on with EHEM. It's the same exact thing that happens in 98.7. 0.7%, of what you're of what you'll be working on in here. Everything's kind of moving together. Go ahead and hold on right now. Everything's kind of moving together, and we're letting that do work for us. So when you're doing your rehen, and you're especially wearing a darker belt, do the same thing you do if you were doing Taitosh. Do the same thing you'd be doing if uh, if I had Matt coming in real quick and he's throwing a left. And we're just and we're just taking somebody's arm offline using using come up. It's all the same thing. It's that little jab is good. Okay, all yours, sir. Yeah. Okay. So just another, another point. That I'm going to take a couple more minutes just to do it because I, I want to make sure that everyone is doing. I think most everybody here is, and I just want to make sure. So I got Matt here real quick. The temptation in this this setup that we have here is that I'm going to take with my arm and my upper body strength my superior mic to Matt Hopper, and I'm gonna push that shoulder back, and I'm gonna pull this back, and I'm gonna push down into this, and I'm gonna take my mic and push it. I'm concentrating on what my my hands are attached to. Does that make sense? I think we probably all got I mean, that, that's a natural thing. I'm gonna push that. I don't wanna be concentrating on what my hands are attached to. I don't even care about my hands. I need to be concentrating on what Matt's hands are attached to. Again, I use this, and Matt, who's ever washed a cat? Who's ever bathed a cat here? That cat wasn't happy, was it? Mm -hmm. No. I, I mean, if you've ever noticed, they, they go eight, you know, or cash it, I don't know. <laughs> All right. But imagine now that cat weighs 180 pounds. Whoa. Whoa. I didn't touch him. I was a 180 pound cat that Matt had to try to hold on to. So I'm not care about what my hands are doing. I care about what Matt's hands are doing and where Matt is. Uh, once I watch the position of his, his hands, not mine. Imagine holding something that went like that to you. Right? Whoa! I mean, what would you do? That would be very hard to hold on to, especially if it didn't, like, you're hooked out of here and, wow, oh my god! I mean, of course it would take you off balance. Does that make sense? To me, that makes weight, that's a harder thing to hold. That's an easier thing to do than me trying to push my, my upper body. You were following me. 
Okay? So, for the next couple of minutes, I want you to get in here. I don't want you to concentrate on what you are. Just leave your hands right here. I don't care. I want you to make his hands go nuts. Wow. And have him go down. Okay? All right, don't even worry about them. They can't hold on to you. All right, go ahead. They can't hold on to you. So, just because this is forward, remember, I said it's forward leading. It's not forward advancing. Or weighted. Doesn't mean I can't go backwards. In this. Let's start in the same position. Okay. Maybe we could see where this would go from here. Alright? It's a perfect Kaku pen right here, but I'm still in the end. Right? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, but I'm not going forward. He will throw me. Okay. I'm actually just having my head. My head's pretty much almost going to stay in the same place, kind of. Mm. But what's going to happen is I shift back, Kyle's hands are going to come back. Mm. And he comes into my head. So I'm not taking my head and throwing it up into him. I'm moving myself and my body back. That brings Kyle forward. And that change of angle gives me a nice headbutt. Now also, too, notice I'm using the top of my head and not my face. That also gets me right out of position. So if I just, whoa! <laughs> okay, great. Now we start a party, all right? And he's gonna probably back off and do these and stuff like that. All right, then do you wanna see it? Is there? Okay, so now I'm just gonna hit, go very slow on this. That head is gonna be coming in fast. So from here, so if you're like, I'm right here on this point, I'm not really gonna go much, I'm not gonna go into it. I'm going to step back, all right? And because my angle's in the house, it's perfectly gonna come down and it's right here. All right, so we're doing a forward weighted step going backwards. Okay, but no, the position is still the same in the end. Any sense? Yeah. Is anything about how you do the movement going to be affected based on your height relative to your opponents? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I get Jack here. If I get Jack here. Um, I'm going to probably have to step down. Granted, I'm sinking myself down quite a bit. Yeah, you know, um, I can get down to that level. Okay. You know, I know where my hand is, roughly. Right. So I know that my head needs to be pretty much kind of on the plate of my hand. Like I was try perfectly trying to like tap my head. And it's right there. Like I can, I can feel that. And so I can judge like by this grip where I need to be in the end. What, what the end angle needs to be so I can kind of go back here and take a right. Okay? Okay. Quick. Be slow, please, be slow. The old bowling ball fine, try it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Back further than what you think. So, even if I got Jackie and Kyle here, so I'm gonna have you two demo because you're a nice um, contradiction here. So if Jackie thinking, okay, well Kyle's already tall, I can't afford to go back that far because my head won't, won't get too far out of the way, he's already so far away from me, and she goes back just a little bit, and she's really not me, she's really not there. So it's kind of interesting if Jackie actually has to go back further to bring Kyle more down onto her level. Right? So if we isolate just Kyle, stand his head back up, and his hands are here, if I want his head to come down, because pretty much I need his head to come down pretty close to where his hands are. If I pull his hands out, he's not going to get down there until his hands are that far up. So I mean, Jackie needs to go lower and Further. Okay? Vice versa versa for the same thing. So Kyle is going into Jackie. He also needs to sink further. Alright? So he needs to get down lower just to get under her. Alright? So if you're thinking, oh, I need to stay close. No. Anything. Go further. No matter, regardless of the size differential that there is. Okay? Go ahead. So I, I think that was kind of self explanatory. Right, back at the end, drop that knee, and you're going to get a good headbutt, follow from there. Again, this class is about finding that the Kamai will actually put you in a better step. Right? You're here grabbing on, you shift over, they're off balance. Great, right? you're in a better position. Right? You go, whoa, here, headbutt in the head, you're in a better position. Alright, we gotta, we got to acknowledge that this is not take on this, just improving our position through this Kamai. So let's actually do this for a punch. He comes in with a 
this left, I'm going to move it outside, you're going to come with this right, you're going to back up, and then I'm going to go with this again. Yeah. Oh, wow. my position is dramatically right for now. Now, just because you may not like that, I'm just kind of grab onto this, yeah. just to make sure you stay yeah. there. Yeah. I think there's a little bit more, you can see, there's a lot of problems for him right now. All right. I have a couple of major options to dump them on his ass. It depends on how bad I want to. So what we're going to do is we're going to move off of the first one. Whoa. As that second one comes in, maybe a switch over to the Sichi motion from here. And then, once again, I'm just going to move, I'm going to shift from here right into that E-hand. Right into that E-hand. If you want to take somebody down, fine. And grab. You can grab, push the, their knee forward. And pull them down that way. Fine. You don't want to have your knees kicked out because you've been here for about an hour and a half. One, two, boom. Boom. Take that punch. Four, come back. All right. I don't care about the take out. What I'm looking at is that we're, what I don't want to see is one, yeah, two, that. Yeah. 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 I want to see this. Go for it. Whoa, two in the end. All right, this one from here to here is huge. Okay, and that's what I really want to practice on. All right, so getting out of the way of one, getting out of the way of two, shifting to that end. All right, again, I want to have that kind of that kind of work. Let's see how that kind of gets dramatic. Got it? Um, my turn. So where I, I've said this story, but I want to get this on tape. Where I put my hand before I go to the head matters. So if he comes off on that first one, one, two, yeah, two, and I'm out here on his wrist, and I try to, he can just take all the tension out of his shoulder and drop and just collapse. Uh oh, boom. I'm gonna get that back. I need to control this shoulder. The further I'm out the more opportunity you can just break this elbow down, I'm gonna walk into an elbow, I mean, he can, it's too far away. So I need to really get that elbow out of play. So now he can't do that. And I'm getting close to his shoulder, so now as I go right here, I get a shoulder. That shoulder moves. I need that shoulder to move, because that takes a hit to get to knee. If I'm out here, big probability that I won't get the shoulder, or something will happen. I would actually need to do knee and one this way to kind of start dragging him off. So please, be, be about here. That's why I was kind of grabbing his bicep. Shaka Ken's knee off really, really work. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Okay. And that way I can actually go with it. Make sense? Good. Just one point. I think I said it's going on tape. Good. Monte. So these are all Lego blocks. Like that. Look at Jack here. These are all Lego blocks. All right. Jack and I are grappling here. Well, that was the second ending from punches off the first round. Like, wait a minute. Look, I mean, I, I can fake an E-hand this way, push your arm up. I have, I have a second ending with the first start. Right. Well, so let's actually do a half step halfway. No, maybe just grab, punch. All right, I can do that second ending. Yep, punch. But we, we did because he had uh, this very powerful. Uh, so I got back here. Now, granted, this was a training drill on this combine. All right, so Jack is here. You know, I was like, okay, let's go with this. And this is like a real attack. I mean, we're, we're, yeah, I mean, I would probably throw some other stuff in there. He says, I go. Don't get me wrong. We didn't talk about Ken. Oh my god, there's so 
so many that can work so well. Right here. All right, we're really actually in the come up. Now, um, would it work? Yeah. Would it probably be that? No, I mean, we have the wall. Well, yeah. Kind of something like that. Yeah, uh, and she's actually throwing that one too. Whoa, shit. Whoa, whoa. Okay, great, you know. All right, you saw the E head in there, right? Does that graph touch? Alright, you can see it, but we had to go big to kind of see the angles to play with before you really kind of get to that. But I want to understand, we we're looking at this thing to understand how this makes a huge difference. It's in every single one. Uh, yeah. And it's 
extended left side goal is to basically have instructors show something that they're working on and they think is interesting, or something that they may have never shown before that you'll probably only ever see there. You know, a different takes, different looks at things. And um, so yeah, love to see ya. Um, pricing is up on the website, 250 for the whole weekend, 150 for a day, 100 for a session, or, or 100 for a session, or half day is also two sessions. So if you that is something more you can do. But on that, great. Hopefully you see you all there, and uh, have a good show week. Thanks for Nice job, Lana. Nice job, Lana. Oh, and Amy Cheever designed some pretty kick ass t shirts this year, too, by the way. You know my favorite part about going to Tom Mount Bruin? What's that? Is you is you can use is you can use